So in this module, we'll work towards building a basic strategy for our social media activity, from figuring out who our competitors are, to setting goals, deciding on our platform mix, creating a content plan, and deciding on our budgets. Once we've built a strategy to work from, we have a clear pathway towards our goals and a playbook to refer back to. Let's get into it. Understanding your competition is important. It gives you a chance to measure yourself against the businesses competing for your customers. One of the simplest ways to research our competitors is to look at their social channels and see what they're doing. Dive into the different platforms they use and see what they're doing on each of them, as well as looking at their website and other parts of their marketing ecosystem. When researching your competitors, here are some key things to think about and measure. How often do they post across their channels? What type of content do they post? Is it designed to generate engagement or are they linking off to their website or their blog posts? And from the type of content that they post, can you figure out who they're trying to talk to? One thing to keep in mind at this point is that your competitors aren't just other businesses in your industry, they're any other business competing for your customer's dollar. So try not to get too focused on just the other businesses in your sector, maybe think a little bit wider. There are a couple of tools that can give you insights into what your competitors are doing on social media that are available to us. And the first one is the Facebook ads library. So let's check it out. So the Facebook ad library shows you all of the currently running ads that any business page has live at any one time. So you could use this tool for creative inspiration from brands you wish to emulate or to give you insight into what your competitors are doing. So the way that it works is once we've loaded it up, uh, it's already selected New Zealand as my location because it knows where I am. And then we choose our ad category. So for the intent of this exercise, I'm gonna choose all ads so that I can see ads from any advertiser. And I can either search by a keyword or just go directly to an advertiser page. In this case, I'm gonna go directly to Air New Zealand because they're one of the largest advertisers in New Zealand and they've got plenty of ads running at any one time. So coming from the top here, we can see all of the ads. We can also see the about section. So a little bit of information about the page itself, a little bit of page transparency things here. Um, you can also see where people who manage the page are located. So we can see that there's some global management going on for Air New Zealand's page. Makes sense, they have global markets that they need to advertise in. But when we go back to the ads, there's a few things that we can see here. First off, we can see regional ads. So these are all ads that Air New Zealand is running in regions outside of the one that we selected. So outside of New Zealand, obviously again, makes sense. They have inbound passengers as well as outbound ones. But for the intents of this exercise, we're gonna have a look at the stuff that they're advertising within New Zealand. So now we can actually see all of the different ads that are currently running. Um, we can also see the detail of those ads so that we can see the ones that are active, when they started running, the platforms that they're being put on. We can also click in and see ad details and see a little bit more of the creative and a bit more of a close-up section here. You could even click through the links and actually go and visit the landing pages that these ads are driving to as well. So it gives us a really clear insight into how Air New Zealand are advertising their business. Another interesting thing to look at as well is what are Air New Zealand advertising versus what is on their actual Facebook page? Because there's gonna be a big difference between the branding and storytelling content that they put on their page versus the selling and advertising stuff that they do in the ad space like we can see here. TikTok also has an ad library. However, New Zealand creators are not part of it just yet. We can still get insights into what other advertisers in our industry are doing globally, but, and they're also a great source of inspiration. So the last thing we need to think about at this stage is who our target audience is. We need to know who we're trying to talk to before we can figure out how we're going to talk to them and target them. The most effective way to do this is to build customer personas. These personas can be based on your existing customer base. Who are your most desirable existing customers and what are the things that they have in common? This persona should include things such as their age, location, family makeup, and what things they want out of a business like yours. What are the problems these personas have that you as a business are here to solve? At this stage, we can't be everything to everyone. So getting a clear idea of a couple of key audiences will help us focus our efforts. After this video, find the personas page in your workbook and create your first persona by filling in the list of criteria along with any other relevant information. So setting clear goals for our social media activity is key to help keep ourselves on track. If we know what our objectives are, we have a clear roadmap to strive for and a clear image of what success looks like. Have a think about what you use social media for. Are you wanting to increase brand awareness within a certain audience? Are you wanting to increase traffic to your website? Do you want to drive leads? Do you want to build your EDM database? Once you have an idea of the objective, now we need to make it smart. 
And this stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So specific, be precise on what the goal is. Do you want to increase brand awareness? With who? Why? Measurable, you need to be able to measure the goal you're setting. Otherwise, how do you know if you've achieved it? Attainable, so be realistic with your goals. We can't expect as a small business to generate revenue higher than NZ's GDP. Uh, relevant, make sure the goals and objectives are relevant to your business. If you're an electrician, setting a goal of getting 100,000 views on your gaming channel on YouTube isn't necessarily going to help you with your business. Time bound, set a time frame for when you want to achieve these goals so that you can set milestones and keep track of your progress over time. So in your workbook, there's space for you to write down your business objectives for your social media activity. Take some time to think about this and write them down and I'll see you in the next video. As a small business, we don't have the time or the resources to have a presence on every single platform out there. And frankly, it's not always necessary. Deciding which platforms to be on will depend on a few criteria. Where is your audience? If you're targeting a youth audience, then TikTok and Instagram may be the platforms you want to focus on rather than something like LinkedIn, for example. Uh, what platforms are you most comfortable using? A good place to start is by focusing on the platforms that you already use. You'll have a better idea of the types of content that work and other things like that. It may be a good plan to start here and add new platforms into your mix as you get more into your groove. Also, how many platforms can we consistently create for? Being able to post consistently is very important on social media. Consistently posting is a strong indicator to these platforms that you are a quality business. If you think that you can only handle posting three times a week on one platform, start there instead of posting 10 times in a day and then nothing for two weeks. Once you've decided on your initial platform mix, now we need to figure out what we're gonna put on it. Content is king, and that's even more important on social media. Deciding what to post on your business's social media accounts requires careful consideration to engage your audience, promote your brand, and achieve your goals. So here are some considerations and content types to keep in mind when planning your activity. So audience relevance. Understand your target audience's preferences, interests, and pain points. Your content should resonate with them and provide value. Brand identity. Ensure that your content aligns with your brand's identity, values, and tone of voice. Consistency in messaging can build brand recognition and trust. Content variety. Diversify your content to keep your audience engaged. Mix promotional content with educational, entertaining, inspirational, and behind-the-scenes posts. Storytelling. Tell compelling stories that connect with your audience emotionally. Narratives can make your brand more relatable and memorable. Educational content. Share informative content that addresses your audience's pain points, answers common questions, and positions your brand as an industry authority. Visual appeal. Use high quality images, videos, and graphics to capture attention. Visual content tends to perform better on social media. User generated content. People trust other people. Encourage your customers to create content related to your brand and products. UGC builds community, authenticity, and trust. Call to actions. Most posts should have a clear call to action, whether it's visiting your website, signing up for a newsletter, or making a purchase. Engagement, this is a key one. Create posts that encourage interaction, ask questions, run polls, and respond promptly to comments and messages. You could also look to vary the length of your posts. Some platforms encourage shorter captions while others allow for more in-depth explanations. And tailor your content to each platform's strength and audience behaviors. What works on Instagram might not work the same way on LinkedIn. Evergreen content. Try including evergreen content that remains relevant over time. This can drive consistent traffic from your posts to your website. Industry news and updates. Share relevant news updates and insights from your industry. This positions your brand as well-informed and up-to-date. Social proof. Showcase positive reviews, testimonials, and case studies to demonstrate your product or service's value. Also look to create a content calendar so you can plan posts in advance. This ensures a consistent schedule and helps you align your content with events, holidays, and product launches. We've included a template content calendar in the workbook for this module. Check it out and begin to plan your next few months of activity. Keep it high level at this point. Later in the series, we're gonna create a full content framework to help us with ideas for specific pieces of content. So while it is possible to get away with purely organic social media activity, at some point, you'll need to invest in some paid activity. For small businesses, a little marketing budget can go a long way. Here are a few key things to consider when setting your budget. So there are a few things you'll need to allocate budgets for. Campaign goals and objectives. 
Different types of advertising activity can be more or less expensive. Generating leads is generally more expensive than generating engagement, for example. Understanding the types of activity we're gonna be doing means we can adjust our budgets accordingly. So whether it's increasing brand awareness, driving website traffic, generating leads, or boosting sales, your budget should align with these goals. Next up is content creation. So if you're using more than just the camera on your smartphone to create content, there might be costs involved. Do you pay for video editing software? Do you want an upgrade to a decent DSLR camera or maybe even a drone? If you need to travel to create content, what are those costs? Are you looking to engage freelance creators to help generate content for you? Take this all into consideration. Ad format and type. So different ad formats, for example, images, videos, carousels, and stories have varying production costs. Video and interactive content tend to be higher in production costs, but can yield better engagement. And finally, we're gonna talk about media spend, which is the money that actually goes to promoting your business. Now, it can be hard to decide how much to spend, but one method we could use is working backwards from a desired cost per result. Calculating a media budget based on desired cost per result involves determining how much you're willing to spend to achieve a specific outcome, such as clicks, conversions, or engagement. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to calculate your media budget using this approach. So step one, define your desired result. Decide on the specific outcome you want to achieve, such as clicks, conversions, or video views. Step two, determine the cost per result. Set a target cost for each desired result. So for example, if you're aiming for $2 per click or $20 per conversion, these are your desired cost per result figures. Step three, estimate the total desired results. Calculate the total number of desired results you want to achieve from your campaign. This could be based on your marketing goals and historical data. Once we've figured these out, plug the numbers from steps two and three into this formula and boom, you have your total media budget. So it's total budget equals total desired results times the desired cost per result. Now remember that the effectiveness of your media budget calculation depends on the accuracy of your desired cost per result and your ability to accurately estimate the total desired results. Be prepared to adjust your budget as the campaign progresses and as you gather more insights into the actual performance of your ads. Over time, you will start to learn what works and what doesn't work and what good estimates on cost per result and desired number of results will be for your specific business.